Hey guys, this is Nick from Meteora, and today I'm going to show you how to install your pixels. So there's a couple of ways to install pixels. Um, we have a couple apps that can do it. Um, so if you go to, if you have a WordPress um, store, for example, you can go to WordPress and you can search for Meteora Pixel, and there you go. You can use the Meteor Pixel installer. And essentially it's, once you install it, you click one button, you can use WooCommerce, uh, it'll automatically track conversions, do products for dynamic ads, any of that kind of stuff. We also have other uh, e-com platform versions for Shopify and, and the like. Um, but if you're just gonna straight up install the Pixels yourself, <clears throat> or you're a webmaster that's trying to put these on, this is the easiest way to do it. So you should have some instructions from an account manager or you can go into the platform under your account and you can grab your pixels on the pixels page here. So I'm just gonna show you quickly how to do this and then how to test for whether they're accurately placed. So you can see here, um, there's no pixel fires for this in recent time. So it just says none yet, none yet, none yet. And these are demo accounts, so just ignore those. Um, and once they're actually placed cor correctly, um, the first time they fire, they'll show the actual date here um, of the last the last time they fired. So you know that they're still valid. And then this is the first time the pixel was was ever seen by us. So those are just good things to check out. But um, so I'm going to take the required pixel here, and this required pixel establishes a connection between your website and um, our servers at, at Meteora. Okay, and then the, the number here represents the ID of, um, so randomly generated ID of for the advertiser, so uh, who you are. So make sure that this is your ID because some of the instructions that get passed from account reps are just examples. So this needs to be your ID. So come into here, check it out. Um, so this is a required pixel, and this needs to go on um, any page you wanna track somebody, uh, whether it's a conversion page or just a regular product page or anything like that, okay? And then these uh, these two pixels, the conversion pixel, and then the advanced pixel, pixel uh, which tracks products, um, go after this. But this needs to be on every page that you wanna send us information. Um, and if you're just doing regular retargeting or something like that, we'll track the URL they visited and stuff using this pixel, okay? It's when you wanna get into dynamic ads and like, um, how much did they order with conversions that you're going to need these ones. This is this is your standard of retargeting pixel though. So we're going to take this and I have a, a site here. This is just my personal site here, Waking Global. Um, and I'm going to place some pixels on here. So I'm going to open up Inspect Element. We're going to go to the Network tab and I'll just refresh so you can get some stuff. I'm going to hit the filter and we're going to type in Meteora. Okay. So you can see that there's already a pixel on here and it, it's fired. So I'm gonna go into the code and you can see that I've just placed this in the head tags. You can put this in the footer as you if you want, as long as the, uh, the other stuff is behind it, it'll work the best. So, um, so you can see I just copied and pasted the tag from the platform into the heads, into the in between the head tags on the site and this is just the index page you can put it in the header or the footer so that it's universal and goes across all pages no problem um, so now it's here um, so I would just load the page with the network tab open and you can see this um, this is the serve and that that was okay and then this is um, my personal user ID so this is me and my browser and my cookie so you can see that this worked correctly. So if you refresh and you don't see the uh, Meteora serve here and the 200 okay, then you've, you're not, you don't have it placed correctly. So there's gonna be issues there. So just check for that. If that's good, you should be okay. And then we'll double check it a different method here in a second. So um, I really wanna quickly show you how to place a product or conversion pixel. So we're gonna copy and paste this conversion pixel, go back to our code and what I'm gonna do is just make sure that this is below where this script is called. That's it. Um, you could place this in the footer and this in the header as long as um, you know they're both on there, you're good. So what happens here with this script is this is just a message called MEQ push and it just sends the conversion across through this uh, open connection to us. So we're connected and then it's just gonna shoot this through when the page loads. So 
And you can also push them at random times, so not just on page load. You can choose to do that if you're um, pretty versed with with this kind of stuff as a webmaster. So um, these are placeholders, and if you don't replace them, um, it's fine. We'll ignore them. If you don't want them, that's fine. You can delete them. So you could say, oh, I only want to track you know, the currency. So you can take that out and do that. You can you know, take these out and only have currency. Um, but for now, we're going to leave them. So if you want a stripped down version, you can just completely knock this sucker out. Um, um, but it's fine if you leave them there and just use a couple of them. So for example, um, Shopify or Big Commerce or you know WordPress, they have like placeholders for things that are going on in your e-com platform. So like the order amount might be something like this. It might be a placeholder called order amount or something like that. And then when the page loads, the e-com platform actually looks for these in the code before like rendering it finally. And uh, they'll replace this placeholder with the actual order value on the conversion page. So, um, and you can generally find those, like let's see if we can find one. Big commerce, big commerce, third party tracking maybe. Third party tracking, passing order data. Here we go. Conversion tracking. So you can see where to place this stuff if you don't have direct access to the code. And then you can see here, look, order amount. That's their placeholder. So what you would do is you'd copy order amount. So you can get the total order amount. You go back into the code and you just place that right there. And um, actually, I would put quotes around it just to make sure that it comes through as a string. Um, so we don't have any issues there. Uh, and then that's it. Then we'll have the order amount. You can attribute exact revenue to how the campaigns are running. And then you can do the same thing with order ID. Let's see if they got order ID. Yeah, here you go. You got order ID right here. Um, and we'll go back and we'll put order ID right here. So very simple. Now let me just uh, save this. Um, since I'm not on big commerce though, I'm gonna remove, um, I'll just remove some of this stuff. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to save. All right, my file is uploaded. Let me go back to Waken Global. And so before we only had these two. Now let's see if we can get a conversion. So I'm going to refresh the page. Okay, those two loaded. And look, oh, we just got a conversion fire. So we got the original serves, right, tracking. And then this is how you can, you can tell. See, these are, I'm um, just showing the ID. See, this one says segment. So that's the original one that's firing, the required pixel. Um, that's this at the top, okay? And then we got the other track down here. Uh, where'd it go? The campaign, campaign, there we go. Um, so you can see here, and you can look for this, the me underscore type equals conversion. So we just got a conversion. The other ones say campaign or segment, for example. Um, this one says conversion, and then you can see the order ID. There's nothing here, but you would, if you want to test that your placeholders are working, you could look in here and say, oh, it says $20. Um, this is the product SKU. This is XX and X, and you can see that it's actually working. Um, and then let me see if I can show you like a real running one in the real world. So here's an e-com site, uh, action sports, shoes, that kind of thing. Um, so you can see we got the original one here. Right, and then now let me show you how the product pixel works. It's the same thing as this. So we established the connection, and then let me go back to the dashboard. You got the product pixel here, which passes passes everything you need to do dynamic ads. And remember, we have the plugins to do this automatically. It's like two clicks for certain ecom platforms. And uh, be sure to request one if we don't already have it, and maybe we can get that together for you pretty quickly. So here you got placeholders for other things where you plop in product ID, product SKU, product name, product category, um, the price and the image. All we need to do to make a dynamic ad is to have the image, the product price, and the product name because we're going to actually make the ad out of that um, so that it has everything all nice and um, in the ad we can say like this is the product name, this is the price, click this button and you can buy it now. You know, so this is how we build those automa uh, automatically. If you have a larger company that uses a product feed and you want to suppress inventory, you know, you're talking hundred thousand SKU plus 
companies, um, then we can also do that. But this is much easier to get up and running and doesn't require, uh, you know, a certain volume. So uh, this is the product pixel. You can do the placeholders the same way. If you save this, you can now go back and see that it is firing. Um, let's see here. Track campaign. Yeah, so here's here's the product category, that kind of stuff. So you can you can look for that. Um, let's check out this live example on Valor. Um, so they got this stuff. Let me go to a product. Sure. New balance. Steve Jobs style. Um, so we're gonna go to here and then let's see. Track campaign. And you can see, like, see, here's the real product being passed. New balance. Um, footwear and sneakers, you know, and here's some of the other stuff, like the referring URL and whatnot. And let me pull up the source code from this just so you can see. Let's see if we can find it. MEQ. So I'm going to just, you'll find and search for MEQ. You can also search for Meteor, but MEQ is how you're going to find this. And you can see that the product ID is here. The placeholder got replaced. The SKU ID got replaced. The name um, got replaced here. You know, categories, footwear and sneakers, the price is $95, and this is all getting passed to us. And then here is the product image that we would use to create the dynamic ad. Um, so those are the couple different ways you can do the pixel. And then finally, uh, you can check it by going here, seeing if, if these um, variables change to a time. Um, you know, and stuff and stuff like that. And then, and then to get even more advanced, you'll see on some of these, and you can actually do this with uh, the product pixel as well as you can pass custom parameters. So you can just add a key and a value down here, um, like the conversion pixel. So let me plop this back over here. And this is where you can get really intense. Um, this definitely requires some thinking about what your product is service and how how you want to target people um, so an example that i like to give is if i am um, for the car maker and people go in and they they do custom things they do very custom things with building their car um, you know you could think of it as you could pass google analytics um, stuff through here like this person is a return customer um, you can make a key and a value to identify anybody based on a behavior um, or what they're looking at. So for the car example, you could say um, instead of having the placeholders, you could actually program your page to plop in other values in here automatically. So you might want to say like the car or the car color is red and you would do this programmatically, obviously, so it scales. Or you can do, um, and you don't have to do it programmatically. There's some people that just want to identify certain people by page type, so they'll do this by hand. But um, just to give you an idea, you could say music equals Bluetooth. And you, you could go through and you can make hundreds of these things. And then you can later segment people on them. So you, um, if you do it programmatically, this gets extremely powerful, especially at high volumes. So what we're gonna do is now, once this is placed, that's gonna be passed to us when a user comes and sees us. So they made a car that was red, music is Bluetooth, and you can pass this stuff not just on page load. So you can, you can push us an MEQ at any time and tell us, oh, hey, this person just added this, you know, so they don't have to, uh, if it's a dynamic page. So uh, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna go create a segment, and you're gonna to go to optional advanced controls. And now that we're tracking those people on there, um, this placeholder behind here needs to change. This is actually new. But essentially, you would do your key and your, uh, and your value. So you would say like color equals red, um, and then you could say music equals, um, well, yeah, Bluetooth, and that way, if this segment was actually launched, we would basically target ads to anybody that didn't that built a car that was red, but did not have Bluetooth. Maybe that's my inventory stock that's left, and that way I wanna I wanna funnel ad spend to that direction and get rid of more inventory in that area. So um, again, this this is a little bit more advanced, but if you want to get crazy, that's how you do it. Um, 
And that's pretty much the basic overview of pixels. Um, remember, you don't you don't have to pass all this stuff. If you want to fire just a regular conversion, you can literally go copy. Um, you can go copy, paste, and you can literally have just that, and we're good. And then if you want to do a conversion page, you just go, oh, this is a conversion page, just copy that, and place it there, save your file, and you're done. So, um, yeah, really easy. And then remember to ask account managers if you have an e-com platform, if we have an app available for it. Um, and if not, recommend it to us and we'll build it. Um, so that way you can click one or two buttons and all this stuff is taken care of for you. So um, thanks and I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial.